But where I see most of the problems is with the supplementation of so many women are scared to take. And you want them taking. Creatine. I want everyone taking at least five grams of creatine per day for the health really? of the brain and the health of the body. Yeah. What does that do? So creatine is involved in cell energy metabolism. So it helps. What does a 20, 30, 40, and 50 year old look for those four ages in testosterone? Oh, I don't know, but you should be definitely getting, if you're a young male in your 20s and 30s, you should be over a thousand. Okay. Yeah. But funnily enough, in these sleep studies that I mentioned, even getting one night of sleep deprivation drops your cortisol level. And I think they tested um, sleep deprivation on a 25 year old, and he had that the same testosterone level from sleep deprivation over a week, that of like a 60 year old man. Yeah. Yeah. I, be I believe that because also like testosterone's peaking in the morning statistically. So I think you also preach the best time to work out would be in the morning, right? Mm -hmm. When natural levels of testosterone are up, cortisol levels are up and you want to keep exercise as far away from sleep as possible. Right. So there's also like, you know, guys like Andrew Huberman out there who have all the protocols and everything and, and. I mean, this, it's very fascinating. The guy, mm. I feel like he's dropping new bars every day with like something I've never he's heard about. He's wonderful, yeah. Similar to you. Like you guys are coming at it in, in your own lanes, but, you know, you have so much knowledge of all this stuff. You know, one of the things he always talks about is the morning sunlight, right? Which means I think he's like within 20 minutes of waking up, make sure your eyes are contacted to sunlight. What's, what's the logic there with that? Because when you... When your eyes see the sun for the first time, it signals to an area in the brain that you are awake. So it starts to turn on all of the internal clocks. And the longer that you, you know, the longer that you don't see sun, like that's when your internal system starts. So if you, you know, if you start your internal system at 11 a.m., 12 hours after that, you'll start to get sleepy. Right. Mm. So you need to set your circadian rhythm by turning on all of your internal clocks. And that happens by getting direct sunlight to the retinal ganglion cells, which sit on the lower portion of your retina. Once those cells are activated, it sends a signal to something called the suprachiasmatic nucleus, which then says to the rest of the body, she's awake. Mm. Let's get going. Now, you were saying you can't do this through glass because it reflects Gla light or something like glass that? Glass attenuates, blocks light from the sun. Shit. Yeah. I love having those skylights out there because I see yeah. the sun right away. But I do go – like I walk to the gym every day and that's, yeah. that's like a half hour after I wake up. Yeah, that's – and look, another thing that people hate when I say it, they say I hate when you tell us that we need three hours of sunlight a day. I'm like, but that's what we need. And so a lot of these guys are not getting sunlight. And sunlight yeah. is correlated as well to testosterone levels. Um, weight training is correlated to testosterone levels. So that's another epidemic that we're having. Like people not weight training? People not weight training and people not getting out into the sun because they're in offices. Yeah. yeah. So you also preach about how, you know, women in particular don't like to weight train because they're like afraid they're going to get ripped or something. But that's not true. Oh my God. And you need them to do it. To get big and bulky, just to even grow a pound of muscle, you have to be working so hard. Yeah. And you have to be doing so many sets and reps to failure. Yeah. You know? Uh, but where I see most of the problems is with the supplementation of creatine. So many women are scared to take creatine. And you want them taking creatine. I want everyone taking at least five grams of creatine per day for the health really? of the brain and the health of the body. Yeah. What does that do? So creatine is involved in cell energy metabolism. So it helps in the generation of ATP. So more energy for the cell, right? Mm. So if we have more creatine, we can help produce more energy in a more efficient way. We produce little amounts of creatine, but not enough. We can get creatine from liver and beef, but we can't get it enough because mm. the bioavailability is just not there. So we should be supplementing with five grams a day. Now the problems here, first of all, it's got a very high safety profile. It's like one of the safest supplements on the market, the most widely studied supplement on the market. I think it's the cheapest supplement per gram on the market. So they're all safe and effective. We have a problem with women thinking that A, they're going to get, and this is actually across the board, all genders, that they're going to get 
kidney dysfunction. There's been no known case of kidney dysfunction mm. from creatine use. None. Well, no, I don't think so, unless you've got an underlying cause, okay. right? That's the first thing. The second thing is women think they're going to bulk up. No, they're not. Does it push more water into the cell, creating a more uh, fuller effect? Yes. You may feel bloated. Okay, great. Maybe go to two and a half grams a day. Mm. Then there's this problem with men thinking that they're going to lose their hair. With creatine? With creatine. So what happens is- That's a thing? That's, yeah, it's a thing because they think that they're going to produce more DHT. What's that? Dihydrotestosterone. What's that? So dihydrotestosterone is um, involved in the conversion of testosterone, right? Okay. So what happens di when dihydrotestosterone is raised, it miniaturizes the, where the, the follicles of the cell. And when it miniaturizes the cell, therefore less, fo less hair grows out of the follicle and that eventually it closes and it kills this, the Oh, yeah. so it makes them bald. So that's what ends up making people have male pattern baldness, et cetera. Got it. So this is why if you have finasteride or if you have a drug that can help offset it, it blocks DHT. So therefore you won't miniaturize the cell. Oh. Okay, the follicle, I should say. But you were saying this because people think because creatine Because people is think that, that creatine increases DHT. And it does And with... Uh, we've ha and this is because of, I think, one study that went viral many years ago that showed that, yes, it's doing this. And so people just hasn't, haven't gotten off that bandwagon. So people mm. think it makes my hair fall out. It's like, no, it doesn't. So you want five grams a day? Five grams everyone. a day, depending on your weight. You can go up to seven and a half. You can go up to 10 grams a day. Yeah. I, maybe I'm misremembering this and it's, it's another one, but like one of the benefits is it, it helps with water retention. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right, and that and, helps build muscle. And well, it helps, you know, it helps, you know, become more hydrated so you can lift more. Yeah. Uh, and the thing is like women should be doing everything they can to help with bone mineral density. Women, bone mineral density. Yeah. So they don't become osteoporotic. We have mm -hmm. one of our primary hormones is estrogen and that is depleted and non-existent in postmenopausal women. We know that we need it for bone density. This is why a lot of postmenopausal women become osteoporotic. Two out of three Alzheimer's disease cases are female due oh, wow. to estrogen receptors in the brain. Thank you for watching the video, guys. If you haven't already subscribed, please smash that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.